Uh, thank you very much, uh, Pasi, for inviting me here. Are you able to see? Yes. Right. Okay, so, <clears throat> so for me, one of the big uh, issues in leadership is uh, succession. Right? And I put this picture right at the beginning because when my term at KCB ended, I handed over successful to Joshua Yugara, who for the last five years has been running this bank really well. You know, and for me, the two, one of the true uh, traits of leadership is that when you are gone, the institution continues uh, uh, its life and even becomes a better institution. And that leaders, therefore, as part of their <coughs> strategic leadership journey, must always think about what happens after me and that we should kind of avoid the, the, the African tradition of hanging on long, before, long beyond your time. But that you need to prepare for this journey because it's not easy. Uh, that transition is not an easy thing for, for leaders to make. So there must be a conscious decision and thought process with the leaders as to what happens next uh, beyond you. And we've got uh, a number of institutions in this country today, if you watch over the last five years or so, which have had very, very successful years, uh, leaders in their first five years, seven years. Uh, they come to their 10 year mark they leave and the institutions are straight into trouble. So you begin to ask, you know, what happened here? So we have stories like Kenya Airways, we have Mumias, we have Uchumi. We have a number of stories in this country that you can point to and which can form case studies uh, for your projects, uh, etc. But I thought I should show you this uh, and I'm quite proud of this. And I like this especially because in the story of KCB, I took over from a guy called Terry Davidson. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, who had taken over from, from Garrett George. Now, immediately I took over from Terry, about a year later, I was having lunch with him, and I said to Terry, uh, two years later, Terry, you must be very, a very happy man. He asked me why. I said, because your bank is still going strong, so you must have done something right to get me in place. And I said to him at that time, I'm actually not sure that I'll be feeling exactly how you're feeling when I leave, because I don't know how that tr succession is, transition is going to be. But thank God, uh, things happened, uh, and uh, and uh, and we are where we are today. Five years later, I'm out of the institution, and I still very much uh, am part of it. So, so, so this is this is my journey at KCB. I joined KCB in 2005 as a deputy CEO. I became CEO uh, in, at the start of 2007. I left at the end of 2012. The 13 billion shillings result, here is a quarter three, it's a September result. I just picked up this, uh, this slide from, from my history. But actually the actual performance in, for, 12, for 12 months in 2012 was close to 20 billion shillings. So that graph moved from 15 to I think it was 18 point something. Uh, and last year they hit 29 billion. So that graph is still going up uh, with Joshua or Edgar from where he <coughs> left it. But I just want to demonstrate that institutions go through uh, their circles. So KCB in 2000, a loss of just below 1 billion. In 2002, a loss of 4 billion shillings, right, negative. And at this time, government was toying with selling off this institution. It was insolvent. And you can see what the leadership, leadership transition and focus by leadership leaders can do to institutions. So Gareth George came in here. Uh, and his task was really to shake up the institution uh, and really uh, uh, begin to work on issues like culture, issues like performance, uh, collect bad debts, etc., etc. So he was a turnaround kind of specialist uh, in that phase here. Terry Davidson was a stabilizing factor, uh, and Terry stayed there from like 2003, uh, and he left uh, in April 2007, which is when I took over. And you can see that what Terry was doing was kind of stabilizing the institution around that time. I worked with him from here. And my role then was to grow the institution. Right? So part of the strategic, and when I came in, I actually came in here in charge of strategy and, 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 and expansion and growth, etc., etc. And, and that mandate then enabled the institution then to move forward the way, the way it did. Uh, and I like this chart because it kind of, tells a story on one slide, the story of KCB. Almost dead, 
the stability phase and really growth and you know and, 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 and moving on, right? Does that make sense? Yes. So that's that story. Uh, <coughs> Um, the transition, handing over to Joshua, the succession. So no acrimony, I did kind of sneak out of the office and then he sneaked in the following day. Was, yeah. Um, handing over with the, with the chairman at the time, Musandeto, Joshua, myself. Uh, Christmas 2012, you know, a bit of fun. Uh, I was in, with Joshua in New York, trying to woo investors into KCB uh, around about uh, 2011. Uh, ish, uh, and try and see that uh, <coughs> that uh, and this this is one of the cases AGMs annual general meetings talking to shareholders and you mentioned stakeholders so talking to to shareholders to tell them that their money was being looked after well. So after KCB, what happened to me? People say you disappeared after KCB. We don't see, we don't hear about you. Uh, what happened? I went in Deloitte for three years uh, consulting. I wanted to learn what consulting is all about, what they do on the other side. Uh, I came out at the end of 2015. I now lead uh, an institution called the Leadership Group, uh, which uh, focuses very much on growing leaders, very much like yourselves, uh, where leaders are made. Uh, you make them. Uh, when they come out, I grow them. Wow. Right? So, so, so I'm looking forward to meeting some of you uh, as you move forward. I focus very much on executive coaching, because coaching is one of those areas of leadership growth that is becoming increasingly important. Um, uh, uh, leadership growth, change management, as well as uh, <coughs> uh, board governance and, 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 and effective boards. And I sit on a number of, uh, of boards here and, uh, and, uh, and outside the country. If I just look very quickly at some of my highlights at, at, at KCB, the Pan-African journey. So, KCB moved from uh, two countries when I joined to six countries uh, across the region, South Sudan, Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi, in addition to Kenya and Tanzania. That was probably the highlight of my career, uh, both as a deputy and, and as, a, as a CEO. Uh, strategy and the cascade of that, uh, unprecedented growth in profits, that graph that I showed you earlier. Uh, uh, technology recognizing very early that uh, you know the, the future is going to be driven by technology and therefore investing in state of the art core banking system and the culture of innovation which again is part of strategic leadership so 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 before my time there been like three abortive attempts at implementing a core banking system because of many reasons including political reasons and and, and, and procurement interests in the process but after three failed attempts we were able to do it uh, in 2008, uh, 2009, soon after I came into, into place. The CSR agenda, very much uh, uh, the visibility, the brand building for, for the institution. Um, a lot of work around talent and culture and change, and then uh, driving transformation of the institution. Uh, and these are all sort of uh, uh, strategic uh, imperatives uh, around, uh, around leadership. Um, it wasn't always easy, and I, 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 I have highlighted here some of my, my real challenges. Rebuilding confidence among staff and dealing with staff uh, and talent. How do you manage non-performance and how do you manage performance? Uh, so rewards and consequence management. How do you uh, manage diversity, especially in a country as divided as our country in terms of ethnicity? Uh, how do you make sure that that is not uh, very much at play. How do you manage the gender issues, men, women uh, uh, type of issues? Um, how do you manage across six countries um, where these uh, same issues uh, are alive? Restructuring and alignment. So what happens when you've got to let people go uh, because of one reason or another? So organization going through change and you've got to tell people, you know, you guys are going to leave the organization. How do you deal with that as a leader? to make the message uh, kind of palatable. It's painful, but how do you deliver that message and how do you look after the people that are leaving the institution so that even as they go, they still uh, feel that you've treated them well and humanely. Managing boards, uh, managing one of my, I think one, for me, one of the greatest roles of leadership is influencing, influencing skills, the ability to manage upwards, downwards, 
uh, sideways. And this, this, is, this is a big challenge. Today when I do executive coaching, a lot of people who come to me are grappling with how do I actually get my messages upwards? How do I influence upwards as, 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 as a leader? And of course, managing your teams. Uh, every organization has got its own politics. People have got their hidden agenda, things which they have under the table. How, as a leader, how do you deal with this? What you see on the surface is perhaps not what the real stuff is. So, so, so as a leader, uh, how do you deal? And then managing succession as the talent, as we've, uh, as we've seen. But I must say that uh, <clears throat> I've, uh, you know, I do consider myself um, as a leader who is and was able to stand up for the cause that I believed in. So my cause at KCB was to grow this institution, to transform this institution from where I found it to make a difference. Um, and, and, uh, and, and I'm, very, I'm very proud about that, to tackle difficult situations because there were, you know, letting people go, dealing with trade unions, you know, cutting across this, uh, this uh, whole technology stuff uh, and being talk innovation and some of the, <clears throat> the things that we see today. Uh, what is the right decision for a leader? You know, so, so making decisions. So somebody said yesterday that, uh, that uh, uh, just to paraphrase him, he kind of said that if you don't make any decisions, you can never go wrong, right? Uh, because you haven't done anything, but you're there, you know, things are happening. If you look at a lot of government senior staff today, you know, they want to be on the safe side, so nobody wants to make a decision, yeah. right? Because if you make that decision, you're blamed. If you make this decision, you're blamed. So you have if you do and if you don't as well. So, <clears throat> but making that decision is a core function of leaders. Now, ethics, you know, is, is a big, is a piece that is missing, uh, you know, very much in our society. Um, and I do believe that one of the key principles around PAC is to bring this to society. And so for me, this is a big pillar within my, my leadership uh, style and, 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 and career. And of course, working with different groups uh, towards uh, a common goal. And uh, it's not easy, leadership is not easy, as, as you know. Uh, you read about leaders every day, every single day, and what they are struggling with. But if you do it well, if you're able to marshal the resources and the people, uh, the talent around you, uh, and to lead with, con with, with commitment uh, and conviction, it can be highly satisfying, you know, uh, when you see, uh, you see, Professor was telling me about how PAC started with six students and where you are today. It is very satisfying to see that journey that you've gone through over the last uh, you know, two decades uh, or so. So similarly, uh, in my case, and obviously <clears throat> the secret for me is passion, commitment, and of course you've got to sacrifice uh, quite a bit <clears throat> in leadership. It's, it's, it's about being selfless about what you do uh, because you've got the ultimate, uh, the ultimate goal that you want to achieve. <clears throat> I want to talk very quickly, generally around, around leadership. These are some of the words that that come to the fore when you talk about leadership. Uh, and I'll just give you a minute if you can see it from the back. I talked about influence. There's a lot of power in leadership. You can kind of uh, make or break institutions and people along the journey uh, as well. Uh, you're managing performance. You're driving strategy. Uh, you're a role model uh, to, to everybody around you, people are watching you, whether you are in your leadership place or outside on the street on Kenyatta Avenue, people are saying, ah, you know, that's the vice chancellor of Park University, you know, see what she or he is doing or something. So being very much aware uh, of who you are and what your role is, what's your style, uh, you are mentoring people, you are aligning uh, different elements of the organization. So very important just to recognize that a leader is not just this person who is sitting at the top of this pyramid, you know, unreachable, as Pasi said, you know, a lot of gatekeepers along the way, but you are doing many things and you are many things to, to many people. So, I haven't read books on strategic leadership, uh, actually, and therefore I cannot tell you much about strategic leadership. But over the last five years uh, uh, at Deloitte, I came across uh, VUCA, 
uh, as a terminology uh, which, which you know that the world is now volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous. And this is what, for me, is a business case for strategic leadership. Because you are dealing with the unknown. You are dealing with tomorrow. So you recognize your past, you recognize where you are today, but you are actually leading for tomorrow, not leading for today. And therefore, this therefore calls for a different uh, focus uh, among leaders. And the success that we enjoyed yesterday will not give us necessarily success tomorrow. We've got to be constantly uh, on the run because of the changing environment, increasing uncertainty. I mentioned here that trust and stability are difficult to find, and yet there is essential ingredients um, of, of, of leadership. Uh, I also mentioned that truth is more elusive. You know, people like cutting corners and hiding stuff. So, as a leader, how do you actually manage in this kind of kind of scenarios? Uh, the interconnectedness of the world. So Trump wakes up in the U.S. and says something and the whole world is wondering what does this mean for us, uh, for example. Uh, you need to give people hope as a leader, even in very, very difficult times. Uh, so, and then, of course, the whole agenda around sustainability. For me, this is what makes the business case for, for strategic leadership. And there may be other things in, in, uh, from your professors and from the books that you are reading, uh, but I would kind of summarize that uh, in my case, uh, like that. And if I look at leadership today, 